Facebook friends, what is going on? It is your good buddy Sam, and it's time for another exciting Max MSP tutorial. But first, before we do that, a little order of business. Um, if you happen to be in New, oh my God, look at this webpage now. If you happen to be in New York City tomorrow, January 28th, um, you should come to the first ever evening of Mixed Signals, a hopefully ongoing concert series that uh, I'm trying to organize with my friend Seth, just to showcase even more of the great electronic music video performance that's uh, that's happening here in the city. So if you want to come by, you should RSVP. I will put Facebook and Eventbrite links in the description. And if you want to participate, then of course that would be awesome as well. You should definitely get in touch. Mix signals tomorrow, Saturday. And you're thinking, it's Friday, Sam. Why are we just hearing about this now? Well, if you didn't know that uh, I was a procrastinator, then you didn't know me very well at all, did you? Um, okay, so that's out of the way. Let's talk about what I really want to talk about today, or one of the things I want to talk about today, which is this thing known as, let's make this a bit bigger, shall we? This thing known as vertex texture fetch. What is vertex texture fetch? Um, well, you look at this and you see this is, uh, this is 18 letters and two of them are X's. So that's what, an X factor of 11%. Uh, of and you think with an X factor that high, this must be a very complicated uh, concept. But actually, it's something really important that's been made uh, very easy in some, with some of the recent changes that Rob R. Um, an appreciated but still underappreciated uh, pioneer in, uh, in Max graphics stuff has recently put into the latest version of Max, I think 7.3.1 or 2 maybe, has Vertex Texture Fetch now. So what is VTF? Why do you want to use it? Well, let's talk about it. So consider, if you will, uh, first a jit.world. And then consider, if you will, after we set this world up, consider jit.gl.grid shape at shape, shape, sphere. Consider, if you will, a sphere. Uh, let's also turn on auto handle. Consider, if you will, a sphere sitting in a world like so. Um, one thing you might do, given such a sphere, you might say, okay, uh, I've got this sphere, let's apply a little bit of, uh, let's apply lighting to it. So you make a jit.gl.material, you attach it to the sphere, and now you've got lighting. Exciting. Um, and also let's just throw in a jit.gl.light uh, with an adder UI, adder UI for the direction so that if we want to, we can move this light back and forth. Cool, so there's light playing over the surface of this virtual sphere. Um, so something that you might want to do is you might want to hypothetically uh, take the points on the surface of this sphere and displace them by some amount. Um, so to do that, you would make a jit.gl.mesh and attach that to the grid shape and then you would turn on at uh, matrix output matrix output one for this um, for this grid shape and then attach the material uh, not to the grid shape but to the mesh and this looks the same uh, this looks basically the same because it is the same when grid shape when matrix output is turned off for a grid shape it basically draws to a mesh in exactly this way internally um, but now we can do stuff where we actually play with the, the vertices um, at the surface of the sphere. So uh, if you make a jit.matrixinfo object, and I always go into the help patcher and copy this nonsense um, to see what's actually going on here, you'll see that what comes out of this grid shape is a 12-plane matrix. Um, why a 12-plane matrix? Uh, because the grid shape is not only outputting um, three planes for the X, Y, and Z coordinates of each point, but also, let's see, two planes for the texture coordinates, um, two planes for the normals, uh, four planes for the color, and then one for the edge flag, I think. Um, whatever the hell the edge flag is. Um, but we're gonna leave most of that untouched and just mess with the uh, position of the vertices. So to do that, you can use the jit.unpack object. And if you've never uh, done this 
Um, so it says the first argument to unpack is the plane count. It's, it's slightly more accurate to think of it as the um, number of outlets. So I'm going to do jitta unpack to um, at offset 0, at offset, oh, sorry, at offset 0, 2. Let's get this patch cord out of the way. Um, jit.unpack at offset 0, 2, at jump um, 0, no, sorry, 3, 9. And what this will do is give us, uh, out of this outlet here, the first three planes of this matrix. And then out of this middle output here, the next nine planes of this matrix. And if we throw a jit.pack down here with the same arguments, this will let us um, leave the first nine, uh, the last nine planes rather unchanged, and we can just mess with the first three planes, which are the x, y, and z coordinates of each point. So now we might do something like say jit.gl. Sorry, jit.noise. 3, float 32, um, 20, 20, because those are the dimensions of a JIT-GL grid shape by default. Throw a bang here, uh, JIT dot plus, connect this unpack to the noise, and then connect this here. And uh, that didn't do anything. Why didn't it do anything? Because this is still connected. There you go. So that's a little bit crazy. Um, we should put in a jit.map uh, at map 0, 1, minus 1, 1, uh, because noise is by default in the range of 0 to 1, and we want it in the range of minus 1 to 1. And then we can do something like a jit.times at val 0 0.2 or something, uh, just to scale down that noise a little bit. And there, something a little more like that looks uh, looks pretty reasonable. So you look at this, and um, this looks fine. We've definitely adjusted the uh, surface of this um, Q or the surface of this shape a little bit. But something you may notice if the, or it might be a little hard to pick out, but something you might notice if we sh move the light over the surface of this sphere a little bit is that even though we've moved all of these um, vertexes around on the surface of the sphere, we've uh, moved them way out of their position, the sphere is still reflecting light as if we hadn't. Um, it looks kind of crumpled, but it doesn't really look realistically crumpled. The, the way that the light reflects off the sphere hasn't really been changed. And that's because even though we change the position of these vertices here, the position, or rather the direction of the normals, uh, so which direction the OpenGL thinks the surface of the sphere is going, remains unchanged. So this is the problem that Vertex Texture Fetch tries to solve, where instead of moving the, um, or rather uh, you move the position of these vertices and then a shader automatically recalculates the direction of the surface of the shape, uh, which makes the shape look um, more realistic and way cooler, basically. So let's look at how we would do that. It's um, actually amazingly simple. You make a, in the same way we did before, you make a jit.gl.grid shape at shape sphere. Um, let's also do at dim 5050, just gives us more points to work with. Um, there's our grid shape. And then you do jit.gl.material. And the cool thing is that we don't even need to get jit.gl.mesh involved because what the jit.gl material will let us do with um, if we go in here and do at height map mode VTF normals, this will actually not only recalculate the surface normals of the sphere when we distort, distort the points on the surface, but also it will um, move the points. So even though this is just changing uh, the texture that's applied to the surface, it's also going to distort the vertices and um, make our shape look cool as hell. So this last inlet here is the where the height map goes in. So let's do a jit.noise one float 32, uh, 50, 50. And we can bang this, and then we'll use a jit.times at val 0.1, say. And um, I'll put a floating point number here and attach it to this jit.erp. Maybe better is to make a slider 
at size one, at float output one, and connect this to this times. And then I'm also gonna make a bang for this slider, and then we'll do throw a jit.matrix in here, uh, like so. And the reason that we would do this um, is because now I can bang on this to set this noise. And there you can see the surface of the sphere just slightly distorted. Um, and if I drag this up, you can see what happens as we increase and decrease the, and look at that, like you can see just how much more varied and interesting the surface of this sphere is um, when the normals are recalculated based on what's come out of this JGL material. And um, once you've got this man, I mean, the world is your flipping oyster. Um, so let's turn on a couple more cool things here. Let's come into JIT GL War or JIT World. And let's turn on, nope, didn't mean to do that. Let's turn on uh, full screen anti-aliasing. Just makes it look a little bit smoother. And let's come into this JIT GL material and pick like a different material. Yeah, orange lacquer, that looks cool. Um, Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Nice. And then, um, what else can we do that would be cool? I mean, the cool thing to do obviously is to make this thing sound reactive. Um, so, you know, it'd be cool. Okay, so let's get, um, let's see, what can we do? Let's make this ma the dimensionality of this matrix um, something we can adjust. So if we do something like, let's make a slider at size 50, um, and then do dim, oh no, uh, dim $1.1. This will let us change the dimensionality of this uh, noise. And then if we do with this matrix, one float 32, 50, 50. Um, this should make it so that we can, um, yeah, we can make our shape kind of, so if we decrease the dimensionality of this noise, the shape gets smoother, as you can see. And if we increase it, it gets rougher again. So let's like, um, let's pull in some sound now. So... Make sure my sound is off. Let's pull in some sound. So buffer tilde awa. And get some sound in here. And then like groove tilde awa DC. Uh, with a trigger and a, oh geez and a sig tilde, and this is the super hacky way to do this. Cool, so there's some sound. Um, so one thing we can do, let's just take the uh, zero crossings in the sound, zero x, and snapshot, and then also this middle outlet of jit.world will send a bang every time you render a frame, so I like to do something like send render frame, or rather render bang, and then we'll make a receive render bang over here and attach this to snapshot. And now this snapshot is listening to, or rather now this snapshot will um, send out some value every time, uh, the, every time we render a frame. And so if we just take that and do something like scale uh, 0, 15 to like 0, 50. Now we can adjust the dimensionality of this noise. And if we also bring the render bang down here and bang out some new noise, <laughs> that's a little bit, it's a little bit crazy. I wonder if we attach this dimension thing to the matrix and not to the noise, if that would be more interesting. Um, it appears that it is not more interesting, um, even a little bit. Let's connect it back to the noise and throw the render bang over here. 
And that's a little too crazy, so maybe we can um, down here do something like jit.slide at slide up one at slide down six. Maybe this will smooth things out a bit. Okay, I'm not so opposed to that for the time being. And then let's also do, let's also do JIT, uh, or rather ramp smooth at, um, ramp smooth, one sample to slide up, um, 2,500 samples to slide down, abs tilde, this just to measure the amplitude. Let's get another snapshot over here and then multiply this by, I guess, five or so, maybe more like two, and attach that to this slider. Um, oh, and we need, the, we need the R render bang over here. I think we could take this one step further even if we also map this matrix to the diffuse. So if we do pre and diffuse texture and pass this matrix also to the diffuse texture here. It's looking pretty good. Um, and this matrix is still giving us a hard time. There we go, that's what's up. I'd screwed up the dimensionality of that matrix somehow. So this matrix is now just basically doing interpolation on this noise that's coming in. But um, yeah, I don't know if, if you're as into um, bouncy textury spheres as I am, but uh, still I think that's a pretty neat effect. So that's all I actually really wanted to, oh, you know something? This slider I think is messing this up. Um, we can get rid of this bang actually and connect this straight to here. It might make the effect more pronounced. Yeah, there we go. And of course, you throw that in full screen and stuff gets really exciting. Cool, so I hope this has been an interesting introduction to Vertex Texture Fetch. Um, I'm sure you, you as a much more creative person than I will find a more um, exciting use for it. Um, but, you know, if you didn't carefully read the release notes for Max 7.3.1 or whatever, and you wanted the beta list, uh, you might not even know it was there. So it's a cool thing you should play around with, and um, I hope you enjoy that. And even more so, if you're in New York, um, I hope you come and hang out tomorrow at Mixed Signals. It will, be, um, it will be a very good time. So take it easy. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.